Turning now to your community focus, will artificial intelligence wipe out the human race? It may sound like something from a sci-fi film, but some experts say it is a real-life risk. Joining me now to drill down into the topic of AI, Brown University computer science professor Michael Littman. Thanks so much for being here. It's great to be here. So I, before we get into this sort of sci-fi-esque headline, we talk about artificial intelligence a lot. Just very quickly, what is it? It's not all that well defined, actually. It's okay. mostly computation. But for the most part, people refer to things that are artificial intelligence if we think that solving them with a computer would require human level intelligence in some way. OK, so let's talk about this sort of scary headline that was released somewhat recently. We have this quote from the Center for AI Safety I want to put on people's screens. They said, mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war. Should we be concerned? We should be concerned about a lot of things, but I'm not sure that I would put this anywhere near the top 10 in terms of things that we should be afraid of for our lives right now. If I was that nervous, I would be getting out of the studio right now, <laughs> just getting onto the road and getting away from everything. But the fact of the matter is, it, it, it's, it's quite a long time before we have computer systems that would even have that level of sophistication that they'd be able to challenge us in any way. Okay, so we've been talking a lot about how Congress is starting to try and wrap their arms and their minds around artificial intelligence and maybe what to do to regulate it. So what do you think is the single most important step that Congress could take when it comes to regulation of AI? Yeah, so I think it's very important that we separate the idea of AI research, trying to understand these processes and how we can build these sorts of systems, from actually applying it to people in the real world. And whenever we apply something to people in the real world, we have to take extreme care to make sure that people's safety is paramount. Hmm. And so you flagged something to me recently that I found very interesting. A study found that AI could essentially read our minds, translate <laughs> our private thoughts in people by analyzing where blood was flowing in different parts of the brain. Talk to me about this. Sure, yeah, so so it's not quite what it sounds like. It's okay. not like they're computers that are sitting around watching you and trying to figure out what you're thinking. <laughs> it's more that people come into the lab and they have their brain scanned for 16 hours while they think about all sorts of different things. In particular, they read stories and the computers, the AI systems, try to correlate the blood activity in their brains with the things that they're reading at that moment. Then later, when they think about ideas, the computers say, well, this is what they were thinking about before when their brains look like this, so maybe that's what they're thinking about now. So how far away are we, do you think, from just being able to think to send a text message or maybe eliminating the computer keyboard? Yeah, well, so that would require some amount of instrumentation. You have to have something on your head that mm. would actually be able to pick up on signals coming from your brain. As you know, signals from our brain control our mouths, and that's a really good way of communicating from one brain to another. But at some point, yeah, we'll be able to read really subtle signals like changes in muscle flow, uh, uh, muscle tension and so forth that could be used to send signals to computers, and that might make it easier to use them. And just 30 seconds before I let you go, because you're also in academia, we've got a story coming up at 4.30 about the, the use of AI in the classroom, chat GPT, how students are maybe misusing it. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think this is, it's a really exciting topic because I think the opportunities are tremendous, but but doing it wrong will actually harm like a whole generation of kids. And so people need to be trying out new ideas, experimenting with them, and trying to figure out what works best for our kids. Brown University computer science professor Michael Littman, always great to talk to you. Thanks for being here at 4. Thanks so much.